Imagine if one night somebody stole all of the trees from your neighborhood. What do you think you may have lost? You see, trees are remarkable organisms that really do make our towns and cities better places to live. They provide a wide range of benefits or ecosystem services. And there's lots of new research that's helping us to understand these benefits and their relationships to us. And we can also now quantify some of these benefits. And some of them we can even value as well. And that's been an important part of my work for the last 10 years. I'm Kenton Rogers. I'm a chartered forester and co-founder of Tree Economics, a social enterprise. And I've been working with trees pretty much since leaving school. First in traditional forestry, and now in the urban forest, where trees meet people. And the urban forest, some people say, is that really a thing? Well, yes, it is. And it's not just the trees. It is also the shrubs, the hedges, open natural areas, and the wildlife. The great thing about trees is, when we're talking about these benefits, is that they can provide all of them all at the same time. And even more than that, trees do not charge us for these services. They do not complain. They don't go home at the weekend. Imagine asking an engineer to design a piece of street furniture that could do all of these things all at the same time. Whilst constantly growing in size and thereby increasing the benefits over time. Because as trees grow, their canopies grow, and that really is the engine for all these ecosystem services. And then to consistently do that for 150, 200 years. Wow, that's quite something. But we also need to remember that these trees have taken time. They're not here by accident. They were planted by our grandfathers, grandmothers, many years ago in the Victorian and Edwardian areas, areas of the 17 or 1800s. And trees have been so good at just quietly getting along with it, they tend to blend into the background whilst we sit under them. And we tend to take them for granted. And that's a great shame. And we're losing them at an alarming rate as a result. The US Department of Agriculture's Forest Service estimate that across the US, 36 million urban trees are lost every single year to things like old age, but also poor management, pests, disease, and extreme weather events. And just to put that into perspective, there's only 8 million trees in the entirety of London's urban forest. So these trees really are a legacy from our forebears. And that got me to thinking, well, what legacy are we leaving our grandchildren? What are we leaving for our future generations? Because when we look at these older trees, when, they're, when they get older and need replacing, generally we're replacing these trees with much smaller stature trees. Trees that will never get to the size of these great old ones here. So what can we do about that? And what are the issues? And that is my mission. And part of that is that trees are seen as very strong, resilient organisms. And people think that we can plant them like we do in the forests, in our towns and cities. And that's just not the case. Actually, the urban environment is a very tough environment too. And trees are tough. They are strong and resilient. Take this, for example. This is the Saharan Cypress. It grows slap bang in the middle of the largest desert in the world, 2,000 meters up on the Tessali Najer, quite literally the plateau of chasms. This is an area so remote, there's no vehicular access. It takes seven days to walk here. These trees weren't even discovered 
by Westerners until 1924. And yet, here they are. This area is also renowned for its rock art, prehistoric paintings from a time when the area was more verdant and lush. They depict hippo and lion and giraffes. And these trees were here then too. Some of these trees are 3,000 years old. And not only are they surviving, new seedlings have even been reported. And I was lucky enough to see some of these for myself. And all this in an, envir in an environment where temperatures can get above 40 degrees Celsius during the day and drop to minus seven degrees at night. And it was here, probably as far away from urban as you can get, where I started to understand that although trees are strong and resilient, they're also very vulnerable as well. And that's especially true in our towns and cities. It's a very harsh environment. There's competition above and below ground. Things like vandalism, development pressure, toxic or compacted soils. And we tend to forget the trees are forest organisms. They're gregarious in their natural environment. There's new research about the wood wide web, which some of you may have heard of, and that trees can communicate under the soil. And they can share information about new pests and diseases, but they can also share reserves as well and nurture each other. And the significance of this is when you take trees out of that environment and put them in our towns and cities as individuals separated, they become stressed. And the urban environment is already tough enough as it is. So some have argued that we plant too many trees in our urban environment because the focus is on planting and not enough on the maintenance of trees. So what can we do about this? Because there are all things we can do. And we should still be planting trees. But maybe in the urban environment, we should think a bit more about nurturing those trees, making sure they can reach independence in the landscape. There's a group local to me. They wanted to set up a tree arboretum, basically a botanical garden for trees. But very quickly, they learned that land costs a lot of money, and they didn't have very much money, and that trees, they take a very long time to grow. And it looked like their idea was over before it had ever really begun. But they were not deterred, and then they had a brainwave. They declared the whole of their town the Arboretum. All of the trees on private and public property, because the urban forest is everywhere, and they reached out to experts from other botanical gardens and arboretums. And now they have their own tree nursery and they're planting trees. And they also have guided tree walks, which you can get in the tourist information office. But also, you can get these from the doctor's surgery as well. So these are all things we can do. We could join a local tree group, or we could set up our own tree group. Or maybe some guerrilla gardening is your thing. But if that's not possible, then we can also protect trees as well and do that nurturing, even if we can't plant them. In Pristina, in Kosovo, the shopkeepers there collect the water from the air conditioning units above their shops into little plastic bottles. And then, of course, they use these to then water the trees in front of their shops because they know that if they provide a good tree outside, of their shop, people will come into their shop and use the shade. So these individual actions are very important. And if, you, if that's not possible, then maybe you can champion a tree. There are freely available tools like iTree, which are free to download and use, and very quickly on a mobile phone, you can measure a tree. And it will actually then tell you some of the benefits the tree is providing. How much air pollution is it capturing on its leaf surfaces? How much rainwater is it holding up, helping against localized flooding in its canopy? How much carbon is it storing? And then you can share these messages. You can create a tree tag and hang it on the tree. And you can share this on social media, or you could even share it in real life, if you wished, and invite the newspapers to tell the story. And these 
actions are also very important because we need to leave a legacy too for our great-grandchildren. And think about that. One day, someone could be sheltering from the sun or the rain underneath a tree that you planted or protected, maybe 100 or 200 or even more than that, many years from now. And they'll be thanking you for your foresight in leaving them with such a wonderful legacy. Because, let's face it, we never really know what we've lost until it's gone. Thank you.